Welcome back guys, my name is Diego. Today, we're gonna to talk about arrays. But first, I want to quickly touch upon another variable type in GDScript, the null variable type. When a variable is null, it means it has no value. It is blank, it is undefined. For example, let's take this variable here. We never gave it a value. So when we try to print its value, it prints out as null. A null value is different from an empty or default value. If we declare our variable as an int, for example, but we never give it a value, Godot will automatically give it the default value of zero. If we declare our variable as a string, Godot will automatically give it the default value of an empty string. When we print it, instead of null, it just looks like nothing was printed because our string was empty. Okay. Now we're ready to talk about arrays. So what is an array? An array is a simple data structure to hold multiple values. So far, all of our variables have only held a single value. By using an array, one variable can hold multiple values. To instantiate an array, we use brackets like so. Let's make an array of strings. We use commas to separate each value. We can access a value in our array from its index. Like any good programming language, GDScript uses zero-based indexing. That means that the first index in an array is the zero index. As we can see, the first value is the string, this. The second value in our array is at index one. As expected, we get the string is. The last value in our array is at index three it prints the string array. As you can see, our variable myArray has four values in it. So what happens if we try to access a fifth value at index four? Let's try it. We get an error, invalid get index four on base array. When you get a runtime error like this, Godot automatically opens the debugger window for us. On the left side here, it tells us in which file the error happened and on what line. On the right side, we can see all the variables we've created and what their values are. On our array, for example, we can click on it to expand it and see the individual values stored in the array. Okay, there's something important to note about arrays. So far, the variable types we've been using, like ints and strings, are assigned by value. Arrays, though, are different. Arrays are passed by reference. When you create an array and assign it to a variable, the variable is actually referencing the location of the array as it is stored in your computer's memory. Let's change up foo and bar. We'll assign the value two to foo. And now we'll assign to bar the value of foo. Let's print both of these out. As expected, both have the value of two. But now let's modify the value of foo. We'll increment the value of foo by one using the shorthand syntax. Let's print this out and see what each variable holds. Bar still holds the initial value, but foo has the new value of three. Now let's try the same test with arrays. Let's create an array and assign it to foo. And then we'll say that bar is equal to foo. When we print these out, as expected, they match. Now, let's modify the array stored in foo. We'll use the append method. The append method adds a new value to the end of the array. Keep in mind that we only modified foo. We haven't done anything with our variable bar since creating it. But when we print it out, we see that both foo and bar have been changed. This is what I meant before when I said that arrays are passed by reference. This isn't always the behavior we want though. If we truly want to make a copy, we can use the duplicate method. Now, when we modify foo and print them out, we see that only foo was modified and bar keeps its original value. The duplicate method created a true copy of the array in memory. 
All right, that's all I have for you today. I've linked the official Godot documentation in the description below. There you can find a ton more methods you can use on arrays. Remember to hit the like button. If you enjoy these videos, subscribe. As always, thanks for watching.